Like a moth to a flame, it pulls the same. Next thing we know, we're in a now bear's den. Tomorrow, I know it all begins again. But where we're needed, we will go. And I will. Everyone, welcome to Heroes of the Veil. Uh, you may, we've got two absent. Uh, nope. Oh, sorry, Heroes of the Plains. <laughs> it's been a while since I did again. intros. Nope. Apparently, a go very, back, very long time. Nope. Three years. Uh, so, Heroes of the Plains. Uh, but we are missing Mr. B. Dave Walters and Adam Bradford. But we have our illustrious cast. At, at, anyways, we got Jen Kretschmer. We got Megan Kenrick. We've got Lauren Urban. We've got Hope Lavelle. And uh, well, we got a couple of announcements. And Lauren Urban is going to break that down for me. We've also got a Todd Kenrick. Yay. That's true. Uh, I, I, that's fair. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's accurate. that's my first announcement. Is we also have a Todd. Uh, I've taken over for Adam Bradford, so I'm going to try to do this as Adam bradford e as possible. Sirenscape. Epic games need epic sounds. You'll probably hear music during this game. That's Sirenscape. Thank you, Sirenscape. Hero Forge. Yay. <laughs> you want minis for all of your characters? Go order a Hero Forge mini. They're amazing, especially if you get the colored ones, the ones that just come it's not pre-painted they are actually colored pieces of plastic i don't have mine near me because you know uh, that would be useful to have when doing an ad read but hey you know here we are also if you stick around during the show at some point we'll be giving away a 75 dollars gift certificate to one lucky person in chat so that you can go ahead and order from hero forge trust me 75 dollars gets you a lot so you'll be or able to order anything you want get yourself a dragonborn they're awesome also if you like dragonborn idol champions of the forgotten realms hey it's an awesome game most of us are in that game as characters you should play it's fun there's a chess code somewhere on the screen i would point to it except i'll probably point in the wrong direction but but you can see it on the screen you can see it in the chat you can get yourself an electrum chest get yourself gear for your champions and you know loot loot is fun and now back to todd Okay, so previously on uh, Heroes of the Plains, uh, all of you went on an adventure with a character named Margo, a Hexblade warlock that was on a mission of vengeance. You helped them not only infiltrate this strange city made of basalt and obsidian, but also exact some revenge on an ancestor and retrieve a relic, a, a scabbard to a sword that she has been seeking this entire time uh, after the confrontation and after summoning the uh, Raven queen herself, you found Whittle, which is what brought you to the city in the first place. Whittle was so determined to find straw that she cut a bloody path throughout this entire domain. Uh, however, you discovered that she was down this very large well inside of an immense dungeon that they have put giant monstrous creatures in previously to deal with uh, trying just to starve them out uh, however there was a during the battle and everything else both Orkira Eldrex and also uh, Alindra Sarbrand went down the well to go communicate to Whittle in Lugaru form as a giant werewolf and negotiations were not bloody uh, yet and at that moment a wild magic surge struck Penelope half pint causing her to fall asleep and now she is falling down the well what's everyone doing do we know that's happening you don't then i am still standing next to alindra what is Looking? the state of my consciousness down here in the well you are now conscious you are no you you see before you like a big kind of bloody tunnel that you've been digging through oh good 
all of you not you that you're kind of your eyes of getting accustomed to the dark and the many eyes of the robe that you are wearing, Alindra. There is quite a bit of blood on Whittle's werewolf visage, and you do see a half eaten hill giant. It's immense oh gut sticking out next to and all of you. Does Whittle see Penelope falling down the well? You do not. Okay. So, Whittle, um, we, we really think that it's, it's probably best if we get out of here. Uh, we're prepared to take you out. So changing back to yourself will be probably the best option here. What do you think? Uh, DM, do I remember anything that just happened in the last day? You have vague recollections. <laughs> You, uh, <laughs> you might had, uh, what's your, what's Will's favorite food? Blood. Currently. <laughs> Accurate. Okay. So <laughs> you, you just dreamt that, uh, there was just a giant swimming pool full of blood. And that was probably actually the hill giant that you were eating the entire time. And you're dreaming about tearing straw apart. So that's about as conscious as you've been. Uh, occasionally things got in your way. And maybe you thought they were trying to be your friends, but and you tried to give them a hug, but maybe perhaps that hug tore them in half. Uh, so yeah, it's that's, a it's, it's a little touch and go. Like a nightmare trying trying to hug Strahd. Uh, not Strahd, uh, but soldiers that got in your way. Oh, okay. I hugged them and then ate them, right? Yes. Cool. <laughs> um. Hey. Kind of embarrassing. Um. I see that I look a little scary, covered in blood. Hey, does anyone have a, what's that spell called, mending? Yeah, I can help. Um, well, do you want me to mend you now? I mean, I mean, is, I is feel a little naked books? without my coat. <laughs> like, kinda... does she have any of her stuff with her? Uh, yes, the cape is still on her, kind of tiny around her neck. Like, it's a little bit ludicrous, <laughs> but any magical items are not destroyed. Some of her clothes are ripped and torn. Uh, certainly, they could use some mending. Absolutely. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to fix whatever you got. Although, if I fix it now, it's just going to re-tear. So, can you change back and I'll, I'll do all the mending? Well, I mean, I, yeah, I think um, I could probably squeeze into it at this point. I think I'm a, a little shorter than I used to be. As you can see, it's uh, a little awkward here. Um, it, my skin <clears throat> seems a little different and not consistent. Um, so if, if you wouldn't mind mending my coat, um, I can probably fit that onto me. I, okay. I, I don't know if I should be going into just like straight humanoid form right now. All right, it's gonna be harder to get you out, but uh, or more specifically, let me see what I can do. I don't want to go in the full humanoid form, right? I feel great. You ever okay. you ever been a Lugaru? No. It's great. You should try it sometime. Very energizing. Hungry all the time. More so than a dampier. But it, I, I I feel healthier than I ever felt in my entire life. I'll, I'll and take I'm like your word 400 for it. some odd years old. If you're happy and you're in control, that's all that matters to me. I've already had enough changes to my body to last a lifetime, and I will start mending clothing so that okay. she, as best as I can. <laughs> I don't know if they will reform to her new giant form or if they. Yeah, mend. I'm allowing you to size up like her pants okay, and everything else <laughs> to to a degree. I think uh, there's a hybrid form, right? Yeah, you're in the hybrid form. You're not yeah, I'm a hybrid wolf. form. Yeah, you're in hybrid form. Well, I, I I look like I'm a little. Awkward, but you're like huge. I'm going through an awkward phase. Yeah. Uh, however, Alindra, at this exact same moment, because you are covered in eyes, for the robe of many eyes directly behind you, you see a falling Penelope half pint from the well. Oh my! Um, uh, um, I will cast. Um, where did it go? Um, I will cast a uh, resilient sphere around Penelope, and she is encased in a bubble. She can't do anything. Nothing can damage her, and she can't do any damage or magic. Nothing goes in or out. But... Does she still move? Uh, yes. It's a sphere of, of shimmering force and encircles a creature or object of large size or smaller within range. Um, unwilling creature must make a dexterity save. Failed save, the creature is enclosed. Uh, nothing can pass through the barrier in or out, though the creature can breathe. Immune to all damage, and a creature or object inside cannot be damaged by attacks or effects originating from outside, nor can the creature inside the sphere damage anything outside it. 
All right, and this, it, th- it's just the size, it's the correct size around her. It, it shrinks to a Penelope size bubble. Aww. This this tiny little bubble forms around Penelope half pint, and you hear the sound of the magical forces strike the obsidian floor around you. The same time you do hear a thunderous crack, but it doesn't come from Penelope striking the ground in this magical bubble. What was that? All right, let me see if I can get your inseam. Oh, well, what? Um, Penelope, you can kind of roll it like a hamster ball. I'm but... still asleep. Yeah. But oh, you're Penelope. Still asleep. Oh, uh, what was all that? How did Penelope get in a bubble? Uh, I caught her. She was falling. Um, and the the didn't want her. Like there was not much I could do otherwise. So no, no, it no, seemed no, the no. thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that seems like a good idea. Um, Whittle, we'll have to wait on the shirt. Um, should I go yeah, check no on problem. everybody? I, I suppose yes. She doesn't seem to be alert. I'd She's like right. to. I'd like to dash back. I'll I'll take a quick look at Penelope and try to figure out. Can, I can I can. Can I get through the bubble, or does it prevent me from getting into the bubble? To examine her. Uh, no, I'll need to disperse the bubble. Okay. Um, so. Which I'm happy to do. Okay, so I'd like to like drive by what's going on with Penelope. <laughs> Why is she asleep? And then I'll fly up to see what's going on with large sounds. Yeah, you you all feel another huge loud crack noise, and rubble start starts falling from the cavern itself and a massive crack opens up right beneath penelope not enough to engulf her but the entire area is now shaking okay then Ow. as i go over to examine penelope it will include a, a grabbing of penelope and examining off of the crack uh a change of plan we might want to get out of here yep good idea uh, Alindra and, and uh, Orkara, you do notice mist is crawling out of that crack in the floor. We should go. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, Orkara, you're gonna get Penelope, and um, I I feel like I still have uh, my my Dampier abilities. Uh, she kind of tests it and like run up the wall. Yep, I can still spider climb. Alindra, if you want a, a piggyback ride, well, out I can of actually well, fly right now. Perfect. And Whittle is just going to run at like, a, I don't know, 120 feet. What is it? I'm in like <laughs> Lugaru and Dampier form. Okay. And are you, are, are you running up the well? Yeah. Okay. Who's grabbing Penelope? I got Penelope flying okay. up. All right. And Alindra, you are flying up as well. Mm-hmm. All right. As as you start to fly up the well, the guts, the rest of the guts of the hill giant just kind of pour out as they're no longer like kind of bound by skin, uh, and you just kind of miss kind of this blood tidal wave at the last moment as you fly up through the well. You see mist up ahead, at the very top of the well. That's bad. Wasn't Briv and Freely and everybody up there? Yes. Are we going through? I'm going through to where? Have we had a choice at any point? No, never. I assume that Whittle made it to the top very quickly. Did she already go into the mist? That's up to you. You see the mist. As Whittle hears what Alindra is saying, she's like, what mist? And suddenly goes into it. <laughs> very good. Uh... Hopefully they're on the other side of this. All right, here we go. And I will continue to <sighs> Goodness. follow. I will All follow right. as well. All right. Uh, the moment uh, you, you, you go out of the mist up through the well and you crawl out of a well in a frozen village. You see ice covering all of these kind of ramshackle uh, houses... There's clearly like a town square of some kind, but everything is covered completely in ice and snow, large drifts. At this moment, Penelope wakes up immediately. Ah, 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 Where are we? What happened? Oh, hi, you're awake. Uh, You fell and I grabbed you and then we had to flee and now we're in the worst place ever of all time. Oh, 
Okay. That pretty much sums it up, yes. Cool. I mean, cold, really. Cold. It is freezing cold. Uh, do we see anybody? Uh, you, Freely? you see... Freely? No, you don't see Briv. You don't see Freely either. Are they on telepathic bond? I mean, we there all were. There is a disconnect. You hear them trying to talk to you, but there's some kind of strange disconnect. So they're on the plane, but not. Something's wrong. We should find them. Well, what was the last time any of you? Wait, am I near everyone right now? Yeah, okay. absolutely. What when was the last time any of you saw Briv or Freely? Because the last time I saw them, we were protecting uh, Warforged in that little cannery. Yes, uh, uh, Riot. But no, they were up top we, as we flew out. Did you see the area up top? There was a big room. They were they were in there with a, a, a new friend named Margot. Yeah, they were all here with us. Like, we literally saw them maybe 30 seconds before we encountered you. So we were all together. They just didn't come on down because they were guarding the top of the well. Can we Okay. find a place to be inside and get some mm. fire going and then figure this out? Because I'm freezing. Uh, I can cast a tiny hut. We can figure out what we're doing. Or we can go try and find a place nearby. Do we see anything nearby? You don't see any, you, you see some tracks here and there, certainly, uh, uh, fr that are actually like embedded in the ice itself when you can brush away some snow, but you, you do see several houses. It looks like this village has been abandoned, this town. Okay, so no okay. other people? No, uh, do you, does anyone want to make an investigation check? Sure. Is this the same village that we were in? Definitely not. Oh. Uh, Penelope, we ended up going through the mist again, so we might not even be on the same plane of existence. Sorry, you were asleep for like two minutes and a lot happened. Oh. 23. Who's Margo? Uh, 23. All right, gotcha. Uh, yes, yeah, so you do find several, like, you find coins and things of the Forgotten Realms here. Okay, um, of a specific region, or? Non-specific region. Like, kind of a variety. Okay, tiny This might have been a trading outpost of some kind. Okay. Yeah, yeah. T tiny hut, and we'll kind of fill in uh, everybody on everything, and then maybe go find... Sure, yeah, let's yeah. do that. Um, I will cast... Let's see, do I have something even better prepared? And I'll put Penelope down at this point. Now that she's yeah, I'll do it tight. <laughs> right. does, does this place... Okay, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, Tiny Hut, it is. Okay, uh, you do Tiny Hut. Does everyone everyone want to take a long rest? And then just accommodating bird. Um, mm -hmm. a, a long rest would be lovely. Okay. Everyone I mean, gets a long can. rest. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think b before we would all fall asleep, I, we'd take some time and like fill in um, Whittle at, on the last seven hours, I guess. Do, do you remember going into the sewers and going after the sword with Freely? No. Um, I got really hungry and angry, so... I feel like the last eight hours, I, I don't really remember much. Okay. As far as we know, you were fine up until we got the, we went into the sewers, we got the sword that, that Freely wanted us to get, that every, that we had the, the weird Briv tell us about, uh, and then you did your thing and ran off. And as far as we know, you then ended up in this place, the, the last place we were at, where you were captured and stuck in the well. And then we came after you. And we had just started to rescue you. I don't know if we can say we actually rescued you. Because we didn't actually rescue you. We just kind of showed up. Uh, but yeah, we had made it to you. And then now we're here. So, so wait, uh, you, you mentioned the, the sword. Did, did Freely find the sword? Yeah. Yeah. It stuck uh, into that, his arm and it was actually kind of nice. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. 
but now we don't know where Briv or Fairly are, uh, um, or Margot. We might be able to do something about that before we go to sleep. Um, may I cast scrying? You can. I would like to scry. Who do we think would get in more trouble? That's a... Aww. Yeah. Uh, really. Uh, yeah, really. Uh, your attempt to scry on Freely is unsuccessful. Something's blocking. Okay. Can you tell if it's that he, like, made his saving throw, or is this something else? It's not so, yeah. I will say you can tell that something in this pla place of existence is blocking you. Okay. You hear no another thunderous crack noise here. Exactly the same one that you heard before. Is this before or after a long rest? Uh, this is before, because I might as well save the spell slot if I can. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Penelope, we not, heard that noise. I, my knowledge and my ability. It, it, right before the ground opened up. Yeah, that's this is why we had to flee. Because there was all of a sudden cracks and noises, and that's how we ended up here. So, should we investigate it? In the morning, perhaps? Okay. Yeah, maybe it'll stop snowing in the morning, Orkira says, not believing herself. <laughs> and then curls up to try to get warm and go to sleep. But at least you could have your hat on for, for the morning. Uh, yeah, that's nice. I do like that. It's a very nice hat. It is. I got a coat to match, and it doesn't always help, but it makes me feel better sometimes. There you are. Long rest? You get a long rest. <laughs> okay. Nothing uh, shocking happens. Oh, jeez. Do we have any idea? So when we wake up, do we have any idea where we are? This is like the third plane that we've been to in 12 hours. Not plain, but demi plain. Yeah. Uh, you are definitely, you definitely feel, I mean, all, you definitely sense that you are still in the domain of dread. Okay. Just one of them. Okay. It's the uh, same kind of un, like weirdly filtered light. You know, there is no quite, there's not quite a sun of any type. Um, do we think we're still in the place and where if you die, I can't bring you back? Should I death ward everybody no. again? No. I have no idea. Well, I'm a little can, worried. Can I tell anything about this place? Yeah, can Is she this... see ghosts? Uh, yeah. I mean, I can, do... I can legend lore what we see, but it's not much. And and naturally, everything around Ravenloft has a lot of limitations. Uh, you do see ghosts kind of floating around outside. Absolutely. Uh, Whittle, you wake up in your hybrid form. You don't seem to have a handle on uh, changing back and forth at this moment. Reminds me of when I was uh, the ripe age at 200. You were a, was... uh, you were a werewolf before? No, but I went I went through this really awkward phase. Um, <laughs> didn't we all when we were young? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of us had another one when we got older, too. It's true. Uh, Is... So, uh, go, Alindra, go ahead and roll me another investigation check. And everyone can. I mean, anyone who wants to investigate the area can do can so. Can I just help Alindra, maybe? That would be great. I, w I would love to help Alindra. <laughs> I imagine it's like being at like a, a department store. Is this it? <laughs> I mean, for what it's worth, my passive investigation is 20. Yeah. So. Um, I will say with their help, uh, with, with Orkira's help, you you do track down some oddities that are kind of like coming up. Orkira, you don't notice them yourself, but you like are aware of it. Uh, and I'm assuming you're moving from 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 house to house a little bit. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you do probably so. Probably start with the town and. Do some looking around. Yeah, I, I, my guess is that Griff and Grant go and do some circles overhead, kind of scan out the area, um, do a little surveillance, and we can start going house to yeah. house to look around. Yeah, you, yeah, you, uh, you do so. Uh, 
you're still kind of like in the center of a storm, but the, it's not snowing in this vicinity at the moment. You do, you, as you are looking around, there is something that kind of pops in your head that Alindra wouldn't necessarily pick up on, but it is strange after you've been to maybe the seventh house, is that there are no games. There are no there are... games in any of these houses. Like no dice, no cards, no you know, dragon chess sets, no, whatever. There's just no games of chance. Who in Barovia doesn't have dice? This is odd. You there... do f uh, find several bodies that froze over. It does look like the majority of this population attempted to flee. Oh, this is sad. <sighs> Do you want to talk to one of them? I mean... Are they dead? Yeah, yeah. They're dead. Uh, yeah, but I can do the thing where we can talk to the body if we want to find out. Even if they're frozen? Well, I'd have to warm them up and... Uh, re remember when we were in the uh, the iceberg? We came across those frozen bodies? Uh, yeah, I could do. I could do that. If we think... We can get some answers. I mean, if they were running, we might be able to figure out why they were, what they were running from. Can I find a body that still has a jaw? You can. Uh, yeah. You, on the, uh, on the, slightly on the outskirts of town, because there seems like something had been snacking uh, some kind of predators. You do find a small group heading out of town cold. Uh, they have been not on as well, but one of them does have a jaw. Okay. Um, I'm going to find an adult who is the most uh, put together. I will <laughs> cast um, Produce Flame and melt enough so that I can get at the head and say, all right, everybody. Uh, His jaw just kind of opens up as you like thaw it. Yeah, oh, I hate, I hate everything about this moment right now. This is not fun. This is not fun. Uh, think about some questions, and I will cast. Uh, after a lot of whining and complaining, uh, speak with dead. Okay, you cast speak with dead. Does it take? <laughs> what? Does it take? It does take. Okay. It's so strange. It's the opposite of what they do in 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 Tashala and Tashluta. This is the the antithesis of what Adrian would want. No games of chance. I mean, do you want me to ask about that first, or do you want? Me to... I mean, I'm open to uh, questions, suggestions. Uh, I mean, but... it's really cold, and it doesn't look like they're expecting it to be cold. So, what do you think? What do you think happened? Maybe they know. I will turn to the, the corpse and say, Hi, I'm sorry to do this, uh, to ask you some questions. Uh, I'm sorry you died. Um, can you tell us how you died? We were betrayed. You know... When I ask questions, of, and I'm looking at everybody else, when I ask questions of some corpses, they just want to go on and on and on and talk about all sorts of stuff. And then when I ask the important questions, they never want to elaborate. I don't understand. <laughs> and I'll look back at this corpse and say, could you give us some more details about what specifically happened here? All fires stopped working. We're used to the cold, but then we couldn't light a match. We couldn't start any fires. Any spells that created warmth, they all failed. And everyone started to flee into the storm, trying to survive. And we tried to flee, but one of us started killing us because he was hungry. Why did you leave the town and flee into the storm? We thought that them... seemed quite dangerous. 
We thought there might be warmth outside. We saw lights on the hill. We thought somebody had fire, but maybe someone had cursed our village. I'll look at the others. Uh, two more questions. Anything? What, do you want to ask why there are no games of chance? No luck? Is it something to do with Bishaba? Are they... I'll, I'll look back at the corpse. Is there a reason why nobody's got any games in any of their houses? I saw something go from house to house after everyone died, was dead. Years after we were dead. They collected all of them. So someone's trying to be um, lucky? They're trying to take all the chances? That seems to be what they're doing, yes. They're afraid, they're afraid of, of chance. They're afraid, afraid of the odds. With my final question, I'll turn to the back to the course and say, who was it that betrayed you? Uh, talk amongst yourselves. I will look back <laughs> at everybody else and say, uh, uh, okay, um, so once the, the, sorry, the jaw got a little frozen again. Let me, um, warm it up and, and they'll be able to answer this final question after this. Do you want to try to go up on the hill? So what do you want to try to do? I mean, wait, are we going to try to find this person with all the games? I don't know if we need to. I just want to find Trilly and Briv and then get back to whatever domain we need to get back to. But if you think finding that person will help. I mean, it well, just you know, sounds if, like a mystery. If, if we see a few uh, pieces of dice laying on the ground, I might, I might pick up one or two, but we don't have to go necessarily looking for them. <gasps> Does anyone here have dice? Um, I think I do actually. Hold on. I I am proficient in di in a dice set. Do I actually have dice? Yes, I've got a dice set. Or or is here is there? with w one nice. hand warming up the the jaw of this <laughs> corpse so that they can give the last question. She reaches into her haversack and like rummages around and goes like all the way up to her shoulder. I haven't pulled these out in forever. And pulls out a set of dice. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. You you pull out a set of dice. Penelope like reaches for them, kind of asking for permission to. Yeah, here you go. I mean, I'm I'm a little busy as I'm still uh, thawing. Penelope Do kind you... of walks away from the circle and kind of holds them up. Hey, I got some dice here. I, I wonder them? if I wonder if um if rolling them would <gasps> cause something to happen. Perhaps. I mean, if it's a, do you want to maybe hold off on that until we get the final answer? I, I agree. Okay. Okay. Yes. Hold on. Okay. You do you roll. No, we're gonna wait for the answer. Okay. We're waiting for the corpse to give us an answer to that final question about who betrayed us, who betrayed them. Uh, his name was Hal Halifan. I'm sorry, could you spell that? That was the last question. <laughs> um, Halithin? Halithin, yeah. Halithin. As the, the corpse becomes inanimate again, I, I had cast uh, Produce Flame in order to thaw this corpse out. Do, was there any issue with that, since they talked about no fires, no anything? Uh, Yeah, there was no issue. Okay. I'm going to keep the produce flame up because I just can. Uh, I'm going to look at it and look at everybody else and go, I don't know about any of you, but I would like to leave before uh, all of the fire goes away again because, I mean, yeah. Agreed. Okay. okay. First, I'm really lucky. I'm happening. I'm really lucky. Let's see what happens. And Penelope's going to stomp on the ground and cast Mold Earth. 
and just kind of create like a table outside of the snow so that she can actually have something to roll on. Cool. A little stone dice tray. <laughs> Even if it's just dirt, just get something a little easier to roll on. And she's going to roll the dice. Okay. What do you roll? What do I mean, dice do you want to roll yeah. in real life? Oh, I mean, I guess I'm getting two d6s, yeah? Yeah, That's sure. kind of standard. It, yeah, just as a dice set, so sure. Is that yeah? Okay. I'm going to roll that. Two d sixes. Oh, yeah. double fives. That's a ten. Hey, okay. I don't know okay. if it's good or bad, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, there's another kind of thunderous crack, and you feel the ground kind of quake, and you do see something that almost looks like a sun. You know, as the st storm parts for a second, but you do see something strange. You feel like you see other objects floating in the sky beyond the, beyond the clouds, way in the distance, like they're going be behind the sun what? Uh, uh, like... it's at this moment uh, you know the storm parts a little bit and you see uh, Alindra and or Kira immediately an ice troll making a snowman up the hill Oh. <laughs> and you see several snowmen all around it and it's just packing snow and making snowmen great I'm sure there will be no issues here. Well, I would like to go in the other direction from that, but I mean, I hate snow, but that's actually kind of adorable. Um, Penelope, you rolled a what? A 10. Are there 10 snowmen? No. Okay. I figured I'd just ask. Um, did anybody see any of the stuff flying in the air or what, what that the rumbling was we keep Did hearing we, that rumbling. What, what yeah is there any identification to any of that that we can it looks like massive objects almost like maybe that uh, distant moons but they're they're backlit by this kind of fiery orb in the center of everything so like they're going into a syzygy kind of thing uh, a bit, yeah. Okay. Like it, everything feels very normal down here, and snow. Like there's snow, and there's geography, and everything else. And you look up, and and, and every once in a while, when the, the storm parts, you see something semi-cosmic, but not quite entirely. You feel mm -hmm. a sense of destruction. I mean, I feel that anytime I'm near snow, but maybe that's just me. I don't want to, you know, be obvious about this. Um, okay. We're trying to find Briv and Freely, right? That's the plan? I believe so. Uh, you said there were tracks. Can we see any of the tracks around us? Who they might be from and where they are going? Uh, you do see little co cobbled feet heading, heading up the hill in okay. various directions. Ah, well, none of those are briver freely. Those are not briver freely, so... And you do see a few null tracks as well. Uh, also, not briver freely. Not are they Brever all going in the same direction? Yes. They are. Okay, okay you want to go in the opposite direction of where all the gnolls and the kobolds are going? I, I suppose... Okay, okay, hear me out, hear do me out. we want to talk to the troll? We or talk do we... to the troll. Well, may maybe? I, I don't know. Is, is it someone worth talking? I mean, yes, you know what? Let's talk to the troll. We're in a new place. Uh, they live here. I'm curious about what is Who happening. are you? What did you do to Alendra? <laughs> no, I like meeting new people. I just don't like being reckless about it and attacking them without cause. Yes, that. Two. Okay, I mean, do you speak troll? Uh, I could. Probably. Yes, I, I think I can give myself any languages I want with. I don't have tongues prepared, but I can use. Oh, I'll, that lets me read. Never mind. Um, that, I right. might not speak troll. Let's see. Does anybody speak troll? Penelope? Whittle. I think giant. Is that close enough? Is it's adjacent, enough? yeah. 
Penelope I also would be like... giant. But Penelope, uh, please. Okay. I will cast Death Word on the two of them as we head towards the troll. Okay, and <laughs> are you accompanying them, uh, uh, Whittle? Yeah, I'm right behind them. Okay. All right, what do you say, Penelope? Alindra, what do we what do we want to know? Uh, well, we can find out about this place, uh, who they are, customs. Uh, <clears throat> Where are we? Also, excuse me. Hi. It just slowly twists its head around to look at you, and it's almost full like an owl twisting of the neck. And who are you? I'm Penelope Half Pint. And our little halfling druid. Oh. Do you want to be my friend? Oh! I was gonna ask you the same thing, but I was really nervous. I look over at a, at a Whittle. I'm like, oh, she must have been offered friendship. That's I recognize that. Yeah, she was. They asked if they want to be her friend first oh. before Penelope could ask. So yes, I think Penelope has a new best friend. That's adorable. It stands up from all the snowmen and it just kind of becomes kind of 12 feet tall and stands above you. And would you all like to be my friend? Uh, it would like to know uh, they, they would like to know if we would would like to be their friends. Yeah. I'll be your friend. I promise okay. I won't eat them. Let them know I'm not going to eat them. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't want to They say that they won't eat you? Uh, she says yes. I'm, I'm happy to be your friend. Uh, what's your name? Oh. <sighs> It's been so long, I think I forgot. Well, you're welcome to choose a new one if you prefer. <sighs> no, I think I would like to be my old name. So we're friends now? Right? <gasps> yes, yes. Assuming we abide by the codes of friendship and... What are the codes of friendship? Uh, Penelope? Well, number one. Don't eat each other. Well, number I got two. That part down. Do unto them what you would have them do unto you. Okay, number three. Take care of each other. Number four. Cookies. That is all. Oh. What about lying? No lying. That's a big one. I forgot about that one. What about tricking yeah tricking is fine as long as it's all in good fun it can fall into lying occasionally what about stranding someone forever no that does not sound like friendship uh, well, what do you think they're talking about now that they, they don't look quite so happy um, I can translate telepathically to all of you, if you'd like. Oh, okay, that'd be good. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Well, well, this conversation took a dark turn. So you would never abandon someone forever? I mean, I... I feel like that's a really loaded question, but I, the answer's <laughs> no. Linda, you see like a gleaming of a ring on the ice troll's finger. Do I recognize it? You can give me an arcana check. Sure. So now that we're friends... 20. It's definitely a magical ring. So what your Penelope half point. Yeah. And we're friends. Yeah. And you would never betray me. I mean, I, I, I stick to my word. I would not. Well, I don't believe that's true. Widow, can 
kind of walks closer to Penelope, like puts her paw in front of her. What? Welcome home, Penelope. What did you are going to take the throne back? What now? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. What? What? And you see the ice troll just kind of melt and twist and form and shape into an old man with long white hair and a long white beard and robe split down to his belt. So you can see all of his abs and his pecs and you see the image of Vordrit as he shape changes. And at this moment, you will under see the ring of non-detection around his finger. Mm. Hi, Vordrid. <gasps> Did we fall into a bag at some point? No. You fell you into, into the bag? place. You abandoned me. Hey, Vordred. Oh, hey. Hi, Whittle. What's you up? look hairy. <laughs> Thanks. I've been uh, working out. Mainly I'm on revenge right now. So... You, Penelope Halfpint, stranded me here. You gave me the, the throne card, and I have been here for hundreds of years. And I... you are going to take it back, or you're going to die. I would like to propose a third option, which is neither of those things. I'm, I'm with Hokira. I think that's the best option here. No. I don't like third options! I you don't like he's a lucky number. He's right. I I wronged him. I I wronged him, and I can't. You know what, baby? He yeah. was never our friend. Yeah, he he was. He wasn't he? Uh, no, no, he was the guy in the bag that we just kind of dealt with, who kept trying to do really nasty things, and then we kept foiling him because he was really inept at it. And then eventually, when uh, not we not inept. <laughs> uh, it's, this was past tense yeah uh, maybe you've gotten better I don't know and then eventually when we were trying to save the world and then he came out and was going to hold the entire multiverse hostage in order to uh, get the bag that we needed and that w you traded him for the bag so he was never our friend you don't have to feel bad about this he tried but to hold the entire universe hostage I, I mean, I, sometimes friends do bad things. Yes, but he was never a friend to begin with. Oh. Hmm. So you want to give me the throne back? Yes. You don't want to take it, but you don't. I don't want it. Now, you remember the last time you took a card out of the deck of many things? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> That's how we got here in the first place. Uh... Yep. So, Vordred, <laughs> you had wanted to, to rule when we first met you. That was what you wanted. You had a fortress, and you had orcs, and you had a castle, and you were you were ruling, and you were enjoying that, and um, doing your crunches and building up your abs, which are quite impressive. Um, it's clear that that's what you've been working on for the last hundreds of years. Um, but you had wanted to rule, so it seems that you were given what you had wanted... Interesting how things that we want sometimes don't turn out the way we expect it, isn't it? I was tricked. How? Penelope gave me a card knowing that it would send me here. Penelope, yeah? did you know it would send Vordred here? Oh, I didn't know at all. I don't even know. Vordred? I don't even know where here is. You do see on the, the hillside a very familiar fortress. The one that was filled with moths and had paintings of all of you. That's what the be. Uh, okay, I know exactly where we are. <laughs> uh, Alindra immediately casts non-detection on herself. Okay. Because Grumsh was all over her last time she was here. And that was terrifying, and there was a rip in reality and all sorts of fun things. I do not want to... I would like to not be perceived, thank you very much. <laughs> one of oh, you Lord. draws from the deck of many things, or Penelope takes one of the cards back. 
That's the deal. Oh, you will never leave this domain. How you how are you saying that? I mean, how, how do you have control over what we do? You can't keep us here. Because this is my domain, and it was supposed to be yours. Okay, so if it's mine, then I can do whatever I want. No, I don't think that's how that works. That's true. Yes. If you take the domain from me, you can be with your friends forever and do whatever you want. Or we could just leave because on a regular basis, we're told that we can't go through the mists and leave to go to another domain. And we've done it one, two, five, four times, five times. I've lost count. Oh, yes, you'll be it's able the way to that leave. Someone always says, oh, no, that's impossible. And then it, it's doable and the thing happens. And then they five minutes later say, no, that's impossible. By all means, go ahead and try. I, mean, I can I wait. I'm very good at waiting now. Did you kill all the people here? No. Who who killed all the people here? This used to be one of the towns. It used to be 11 towns and now it's 10. Mm. And this is the last town. And once it went into the shadow fell, well, moving areas where no fire, no warmth could be found would traverse this plane. Until almost everyone was dead. Well, and if you're in charge of this place, what'd you do to try to stop it? Mm. Most of them are already dead. And I don't care. And what I just about want to be out. And what about the gaming supplies? I don't like games anymore, and I especially don't like cards. For reasons. Well, that's understandable. What, so wait, what do you do for fun? I he builds snowmen. Make little snowmen. It's a good hobby. I sometimes animate them. Also a good hobby. Make some friends. Literally. Wait, did you say that there were people here that you didn't help? Why would I? Well, because, because you're you in charge. I've kept some of them alive in the castle here and there. And you haven't thought to get their help in rebuilding or saving things or making this place better or more fun? Or I'm feeling a lot of judgment right now about how to be a domain lord, and I don't appreciate it, frankly. So, Well, if you don't like my judgment, then you shouldn't have let us in and you should let us out. Hi. Okay, well, look, Great. she took the card and he drops the card on, on Penelope's hand. See, look, she took it. Bye. I want a dexterity save. <laughs> you go make a dexterity save. Uh, this, this is not how it works, Rothridge. Has no, to be no, no take backsies. Drawn with intention. No, 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 no. Well, no. yes, no take backsies, which is why you, yeah, yeah, you, you who you, drew you, the card. You, you, the card hits your hand, but you're like, ah, no, no, you have it. That's how it works. Penelope half fine is now in charge of this domain. I can now leave. I win. I'm the winner. I mean, wh where do you plan on going, Fordred? I, maybe a bag, anything other than here. It's cold <laughs> all the time. And I don't like to bundle up, clearly, because I don't oh. like to hide the meat display. So you, so. you just, you just want to go someplace warm? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, you can just come with us. I'm. I'm you know, we're, we're working our way I, towards yeah, that. I, I, I mean, we could find other solutions as well. We could find a way for you to have to go back home and not come with us. Or you could work on making this place better. Maybe if yes! you work on making this place better, it would be better instead of just being all grumpy about ending up here. This we're is your domain. In the shadow fell. Things don't get better here. This is a place of repetition. Well, and What's so far, all you've repeated is how you don't want to do anything. Mm. I'm sorry, but if you're not going to put any work into things, nothing's ever going to get done. This domain is dying. 
This is where dying domains go. Soon it will unravel and me along with it. I don't want that. Well, uh, I, I don't want you to unravel. You know, my offer stands, but ultimately it, it's up to my group, but uh. Then figure a way out to get me out then. Until then, no one leaves. And trust me, you can't leave when I, I raise the borders. There's no way out. Those are the rules. We can prevent anyone from coming in, and we can prevent anyone from leaving. Who's we? People like me. People who are in control of their throne, their kingdom. Do we still have the skull and the the mask? You do. I mean, perhaps we can get ourselves back to Mordent. Quick, look for a bridge. We'd need the mist. So those, what are those cracks? Do you know the cracking sound we keep hearing? This place is falling apart. Wow. Well, perhaps if we find a place where there is mist, we have the, the means to, to convey ourselves back to Mordent. I don't know if I want to go back to Morden, but it's better. I guess it's better than here because it's not frozen. And not uh, uh, unraveling. And of course, you're saying this all in group chat. Hmm. I'm assuming, yeah. We're all not Kira wants to tell. Yeah, all our Kira wants to tell Forger to just, like stop sitting around and doing nothing, but he doesn't want to listen to me. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, in the group chat, Alindra, uh, do you want to? We'll just take our leave of Vordred and go find a bridge. Well, we need to bring Vordred if he's insisting that he finds a way to leave. I mean, I don't see any issue with taking him to Mordent. Uh, all right. Uh, do we want to make sure that all the people in the castle that he talked about come along? I don't. If we're gonna abandon this, place, yes, ideally. All right. I'll look at Vordred. How many people are left in this realm? There's about. I don't know. A hundred? Is your realm and you don't know how many people are in it? <laughs> That's not how it works. I don't well, have, I, there's no census. It's a wasteland. Well, it's your wasteland. You should know. All right. All right. Are they all in the castle? Well, maybe if Penelope had been in charge, everything would have been fine. Maybe this place would just be flowers and sunshine all day and everyone would be friends. It was never flowers and sunshine. Also, it was. It, it could have been even. flowers and sunshine if you were in charge and actually did something instead of making snowmen. So, are all the that's people? That's not how the Shadowfell works, and that's not how this place works. You can't. Oh, without fix attitude. This. Yeah. Or, or, or maybe the main problem is that the hundred people or so that live here don't really appreciate. Uh, I don't know, like a dictatorship. Maybe you can like. If there's a council or something, like a group of people that have some good ideas, you know, it, it, it would kind of alleviate you of that responsibility. You could just come with us to Mordent. So trick one of them to be in charge. No, no, we don't no, have no, to, no, 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 no tricking. No tricking. You don't have to trick them. I, I mean, have, has anyone mentioned to you any any ideas they have to d fix this Improves place from cracking? Things? No, no one talks to me. I don't like talking to them. Well, that's that's your first problem. That's great. Can you appoint a, a person to be in charge of that conversation? I thought this place so was terrible. So you don't have to be for... responsible for it. Oh, I can't believe this is happening. Okay. I mean, if, if you don't like this place, then obviously you're not going to be like the most enthusiastic leader, right? Uh, maybe the other group of people who actually like living in this place and have some good ideas. But if you're, you have to create that, that you're relationship with those men, people. Perhaps. What? <laughs> the snowmen you build for friends. You said you sometimes create friends out of snow. Yes. And awaken them. Perhaps they like it here. I can't imagine that they would prefer a warm place or a, a, a tropical isle, a vacation to Chalt. It doesn't seem that that would be the sort of place they'd like to go. 
I will agree to a point. One of the snowmen as the leader of this domain, if you convince one of them, I will allow the people to leave. <gasps> I can do it. I can do it. I'll By do all it. means, try to convince a snowman to rule. I would like to see this. I've got a plus 12 persuasion, so bring it on. <laughs> if anyone can, it's Penelope. Technically, Penelope, as I did my research, uh, you have advantage to all persuasion persuasion checks, I think, permanently, having drawn the card, the throne. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> we just forgot about that bit. Wow. We just assume you have advantage on every persuasion check because you're Penelope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of... In the universe, there is a scream that echoes out from Freely. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I heard that. <laughs> All right, uh, Penelope, what's your what's your what's your sales pitch here? Like, <laughs> there okay. are several snowmen. Some of them look like, to varying degrees, angry versions of you <laughs> <laughs> that he's been creating. Um. Okay, so let me get this straight. We're trying to convince one of these snowmen to take over for the land. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> to take the card. <laughs> oh my gosh. What have this I got? It's not going as I planned, but uh, I'm here for it. <laughs> my beautiful snow people, listen up. The time has come for Fortune to leave. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Very exciting! Woohoo! Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's not enough. Okay. Huzzah. They all kind of like side eye each other. They, they're clearly animated, and, and you sent you can feel kind of the magic coming off of them. They're all snow golems, and they okay. seem relatively unimpressed. Okay, 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 okay. <clears throat> this world is falling apart, but. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing great. Oh, yeah. Keep going. Give me a persuasion check for that one. <laughs> <laughs> what, my shifty eyes wasn't enough? But... Oh, gosh. 17. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I... That's supposed to be at an advantage. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and may I give guidance to Penelope, please? Sure. What does guidance mean? <laughs> what is that again? Plus a d4. Thirty-two. <laughs> Dang. Okay, okay, yeah, maybe we can do that. Yeah, okay. Forge's time has come to leave, and he has created you for a greater purpose. This world needs you, and on top of that, this world needs a leader, someone who can take care of all these people and do good now has Vordred put good into you is there anything that's worth fighting for here tell me there is give me another persuasion check <laughs> uh, come on advantage it's a 25 <laughs> uh, guidance as well so you can add it. I can add if you would like Okay. I'll add a guidance. That's a uh, 29. Uh, that sounds, that sounds, uh, that sounds like a good idea, guys. I don't know. Who wants to be, who wants to be king? Penelope, tell them about the rules of friendship. Okay. <laughs> I have, I have them for you. They're going to go to chat. Okay. Okay. Let's. Let's think about it this way. Now they're like snow, like snowmen pacing around in the snow, leaving kind of like curving kind of paths around you as they are muttering amongst themselves, discussing discussing Penelope Half Pint's kind of plan here. And it's very disconcerting because they have no legs; they're just kind of sliding around. I mean, who better to rule a place filled with snow than a snow person, right? It's true; they are the indigenous peoples of this area 
A few of them seem to have else. human teeth. Wow. Well, that's that... their prerogative. <laughs> okay. There's got to be somebody here who feels a desire to do more than what they were created for. Someone who can look after everyone here. Someone who feels that they're not going to eat each other. They're not going to harm anybody. They're going to take every, every care of everybody. And they're probably going to make snow cookies of some kind. These are important. Is there anybody out here who feels this within them? All right, give me one more persuasion check. Um, I have foreseen this moment. So it's an 18 on the die, plus guidance, plus whatever you want to throw on there. 20, it says 26 for guidance. Well, you can wait. You can wait. Well, oh, yeah. Oh, you, have okay. to, you have to do it before, don't you? I have to do it before. It's replacing the roll. Mm-hmm. So therefore, I hadn't rolled yet. Does... Yeah, so you just add your modifier and the guidance. Okay, 32. Okay. <sighs> Yo, I, I got it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be king. I'll, I'll, I'll be in charge, everybody. I'll do it. Fine, I'll do it. Yeah, What's your be, name? It's me. Because all these, you know, clearly all these, the rest of these snow, these snow people are not going to, they're not going to do the thing that they need to do. So uh, I'll be lead snowman from now on. So. What? What's your name? I I, 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 was, I just got made yesterday, so I'm not entirely sure on that point. What would you like to name me? Gusto. All right, I'm, I'm Gusto, everybody. So I'm uh, I'm in charge. This is my new domain. It is the Gusto domain. So uh, w- w- you 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 got a card or something for me? I need you to pick it up, or Virgin, well, okay. you have to hand it to him. Fine. This is. I hate all of this. Okay, fine. <laughs> That's precisely what you asked for. Yeah, no. I just thought there would be more bloodshed and death and creepiness, and then everyone just kind of makes fun of my leadership style and 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 calls me inept. Or Kara called me inept. That's not a nice thing to say about you anyone. The actions you made inept, and and that was a long time ago. Oh, like there's and... a difference. It's the same thing. Well, you know, if it's not true. If your go-to wasn't always death and bloodshed, then maybe people would listen and follow what you wanted to do. It's maybe true. you just need to change your tact, like Penelope has. Fine. All right. One of the yeah. most important skills of, of leadership is emotional intelligence, and I believe in you. I don't know what that means. All right, so I'm going to... All right, Gusto. Well, this place is now yours. Congratulations. Welcome, r- welcome to the Shadowfell. <laughs> Here's a card. Everybody, hail King Gusto of Gumption! Ooh. Yay! All hail King Gusto! All hail! Congratulations on your promotion. Just and all these iced over corpses in the distance. <laughs> just, just like in ghosts are just like. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and there was okay. much rejoicing. I don't know what we did, but we did it. So now what? Where's Vordred? I'm right here. I'm so, standing right next to you, actually. Uh, so it looks like you can come with us now. Yes, I'm no longer in charge of the border. I feel I mean, that's, that's a darkness a leaving. <gasps> yes, it is. All right, let's get the hell out of here. I hate this place. Yes, please. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, bye, snow people. Bye, Gusto. Bye, Gusto. Hello, Good Gusto. Luck. King Gusto of Gumption. Have fun with all the Rule snow. Rule with kindness and grace. Rebuild your kingdom. Uh, and, and may your people long be free. Yes. Rule as a good leader. Walter, is there something in your eye? What? Oh, no. Nope. I'm wrong. Remember the rules of friendship. (laughs) (laughs) 
Orchard, you're my favorite. That's true. I forgive you, Penelope, I find even though you stranded me for 200 years in the shadow fell. Wow. Does he really? Insight check? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm rolling it because- I Yeah, you go, a, you go and roll 25. it. Uh, listen, this is Vordred. Uh, he, <laughs> he has emotional swings, so he means it sort of right now. That doesn't mean that's how, how he's going to feel in an hour. I mean, that's that's fair. I'm just looking that he's not lying at this moment to Penelope. Because yeah, Mordred's he, spent a lot of time in enclosed spaces. <laughs> so, as, as long as he's not hurting Penelope's feelings in this moment, Orkira just smiles and we'll follow to wherever we're going to get out of here. All right. Well, uh, I hate this place. Good. But it, the board is just that way. So let's go. So I believe the way we have to do this is uh, to stand on a bridge. Is that correct? I'm looking. Mm -hmm. We need to go on a bridge and then... Um, yeah, we just had it. Yeah. On, Did we have to put the mask the on? Or we just had it. Do we just have to have it? You okay. just yeah. have to have it. There are, and Vordred informs you, there are no bridges in this particular... What if I made a bridge? Yeah, it could be any bridge, so... All right, how are you making a bridge? I make Add a... a popsicle. <laughs> Add a popsicle sticks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Give me some time. Give me some time. <laughs> uh, They're we... a good substitute for cookies. It's a way to, su to celebrate a coronation. It's with popsicles in this domain. <laughs> um, I mean, Penelope can make stuff out of mold earth can you can do that what else yeah what else do i get i mean the temperature is freezing um can we can we make <gasps> a snow bridge oh, oh. okay <laughs> well, wait, wait, okay i can control water that's a start no is water yep Ice is water. Yeah. These are things. These are things that are really cold, yeah. <laughs> Can you control it and make it a, because a, I think it only has, it only has to be a little bit of a bridge and I think it has to be a covered bridge. So maybe you make basically a tunnel, snow tunnel, and we call it a bridge. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> I, okay, I gotta try this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got your uh, back. You, you are on this, this creepy, misty border, and it kind of swirls in anticipation of whatever your next move is. You do have to melt the ice for you to cast control water on it. I mean... I can? I've got produce flame up. I will just start melting a whole bunch of snow. It's the first time she'll be very happy to be around snow all day. <laughs> All right, uh, Penelope Halfpoint, you can start building an icicle bridge with the help of Orkira at the same time if you want to. Okay. So Penelope's plan is to, once there's enough water to control, Penelope is going to cause it to flood. And then she, as that ices, she's going to cause it to part. So she's creating like a, like a platform and then like side parts of it. To make okay. it look very much like a bridge. Excellent craftsmanship. Yeah. Perfect. All right. And you create a giant... Oh, to describe what this bridge looks like. So it's just a sleek bridge that has just a little bit of a curve to it. And then the parted parts that create like a railing. Uh, if, if Penelope's feeling up to it, they kind of like look like ice vines. And then like... A railing that goes over it. All right, you. Um, oh, go ahead. Before we cross over, I think should we try and find Brave and Freely? Do you think they're on this plane, or they end up somewhere yeah. else? So I could hear them. I could sense that they're on this plane, but they were being blocked by something. No. So remember, uh, you can sense not on this di this portion. Uh, these are th this entire demi plane has many demi planes within it. So. Oh, okay. They are not here. Okay. Never mind. Right. 
Let's do this. Okay. Who? You, you 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 put the mask on the on the skull. Uh, whatever the ritual was that we did before to cross. Okay, you go ahead and do it, and the mist separates, and you see a long where where is icy and icicles. It becomes slowly wood, and you see a very familiar bridge, and you see a headless rider on the other side of the bridge. Oh boy. Is he actually on a horse this time? He actually has a horse this time. Bridget, oh, show off your abs or do something that's going to take this guy out. This isn't on me. You're the ones who said you'd get me out of this. Yeah, but you want out. You, you got to play your part. That's you also budget. see almost like 20 floating heads around the rider. Oh, goodness. Oh, no. Like, just... just Severed heads, like flaming heads, like severed heads. Um, that's frightening. And just to be clear, are we heading into Mordent, or is this the other half of the bridge going back into Barovia? Yeah, what was your intent? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> did we have one? <laughs> get out of here! I don't yeah, know if we had more to yeah. get. A- Border it out like that was our bargain. I mean, my, my goal is always to get as close to Strahd as possible. And now that we have Wardred with us, you know, once we get freely and Briv, she's just making these uh, calculations in her head. Um, the more the merrier, the more the deadlier. She wants okay. to get back to Barovia. All right. Those, oh, hey, let's have a vote. Who wants to go to Barovia? Raise your hand. I mean, if those are our choices, yeah, because that's we're probably what we're trying all to right, get back all right. to. Yeah. We, have, uh, we don't have any other things that we're supposed to, to be looking for, right? Not that you're aware of, no. All right. You form, uh, uh, you enter into another plane that is connecting these two dimming planes, this writer's bridge, and you see the writer, and it leads to Barovia on the other side. Are you going to let us pass this time, or do we have to kill you again? <laughs> I mean, uh, we've already managed to talk our way out of one fight. Maybe we can talk our way out of this one, too. And roll initiative. Yeah! Nah. <laughs> I mean, I was going to ask Penelope to say hi, but apparently... <laughs> Ooh. She's already ch- ch- charmed one domain lord for the day. <laughs> Spent I had an eight. <laughs> you modifier. got eight? Yeah, I... Always roll terribly on initiative. I don't know. I why. usually did. Do. You roll it as the thing that you are. I mean, she's multiple. I'm things on right two now. things. Um, do, do you want us to put the initiatives in the chat yes. or just tell you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, actually, go ahead and. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put those in order for you. So. Yeah, go, go. Actually, go ahead and read those off. That's. So uh, Penelope hard. is a twenty-four. Wait a minute. Something's uh, very wrong. Okay. Or here is a twenty. Alindra's a 12, and Whittle is an 8. Actually, real quick, can you do it in chat? All right, yeah, something I'm broke. Yeah, I'm putting it in. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for just asking Penelope to talk to everybody because it's gone super well. So, if she could talk to the... I mean, you might have a challenge talking to someone without a head. I'll give you that. <laughs> All right, perfect. All right, so uh, you put them in party chat? Mm-hmm. All right, I got it. And one oh, sorry, second. I'll try and put it back in game chat here on out. Yeah, party Good chat. Good lord, was. these initiative rolls. Yeah, I actually <laughs> rolled really well. Yeah. I get a plus eight. <laughs> so. I get plus two. I just rolled around really well. Plus two as well. Yeah. About how far away is a headless rider with heads, with head swarm? Oh, it's a very long bridge. So up uh, maybe two hundred and fifty feet. Oh. Oh. Okay. Really long bridge. Yeah, it's it's extremely long. Uh oh. Okay, revised. Good to know. So eighteen, little. No, I didn't mean to hit that. Oh, so did you roll as a Luguru? Well, I don't see anything in the stat block for initiative. Uh, if just, your dex changes, it'll change your... Yeah. 
So just add your dex mod. Oh. So okay. you probably have like a 18 dex being a Luguru. Um, well, there's a... So what was your original roll, do you remember? It's it was a plus eight. four for deck, so it still would have been an eight. Oh, wow. Good lord. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I will roll as well. That was really good. I mean, Vordred's just going to take them all out, right, Vordred? I have nothing to do with this. This is your this this is your getting me out. I'm not getting you out. <laughs> you know, I thought you had learned by now that helping others helps yourself. And... No, I've learned absolutely nothing from this exchange. Uh, yes. And it is now Penelope's turn. <laughs> Wait a minute, you w Wardred, you've, you've been like doing sit-ups for like 200 years for what? To be like the strongest lazy person? You're not going to help us? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the dream. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you said like 225 feet? Mm-hmm. Okay, I got a math here. Okay, I guess Penelope's going to charge forward and use my... What You're you what? Oh, nope. it, that's the length of the bridge. They're not all the way at the very end of the bridge. They're about oh. halfway through. Yeah. Okay, oh. how far away are all of them? 150. I mean, uh, 125. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> then Penelope is going to <clears throat> just like, where are we? Are we like right where the ice meets the wood? Yeah. Okay. And Penelope just slides her hand on some ice, grabbing a little drop of water. And she just goes, pew! And then a tidal wave erupts and, <laughs> and crashes into him. All so, right. Yeah, okay. Uh, let, let me know what my save is. <laughs> Dex 17. Oh my god. It's very hard to make an argument to even escape that. <laughs> um, oh, that was terrible. Tell me about the damage. Uh, that's going to be 4d8 bludgeoning damage. Unless I... I no, I'm not going to. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. You're not? I mean, are you sure? I mean... Yeah, I can't. Okay, all right. 48 damage. Okay, give me something good. Give me something good. 16 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, okay. And then I think you on a failed save, you're knocked prone. So I don't know if that means if the horse is knocked prone or... He's knocked off the horse. The, the horse is fine. The... <laughs> The death's, death's heads are not. You hear this horrible screaming as all of them wail and are like knocked down, rolling around the ground in this wave of just severed heads all over the bridge being pushed by your tidal wave. And they're just screaming and then they're kind of gargling underwater, then screaming and then gargling over and over again as they keep on rolling down the bridge. Uh, okay, who's up? Sorry, I'm applying damage to a lot of severed heads, and I can't believe that's a real sentence I'm doing. I'm saying. Welcome uh, to D&D. &D. Welcome to D&D. &D. Oh, it's the death's heads turns. <laughs> uh, how fitting. Uh, okay. They, uh, several of them, it's a full It's a full action to get out of being prone, isn't it? Well, they're mm -hmm. flying. It's half your movement. It's half to... your movement. Yeah. Right, and I've already established. Yeah, uh, several of them come racing forward, but they don't quite get to you. So you see all of these heads rolling around the bridge, and suddenly they start floating up, and they just kind of rush at all of you at the same time. Uh, at this, but none of them are able to close the distance at that moment. Uh, but the Dulahan does close the distance, and it, it seems relatively unaffected. Feet? Holy crap. Yes. Okay. And Whittle, what is your armor class? 16. Okay. It hits? By how much? Uh, 
Uh, it got a total of 23. Oof. Okay. All right. It buries its axe into you for a second, doing 12 points of slashing damage. And then six points of necrotic damage. Wait, so how much damage total does it hit me for? I just lost it. Oh, I you thought should... you said 23, but the breakdown... No, 23 was, 23 was how, how much it, it... No, it was... Yeah, it was 23 to hit. Um, oh, okay. But it... Yeah. Let yeah, me just go ahead and roll it again. Uh, so uh, we'll say six points of slashing damage. And then eight points of necrotic damage. And it's going to slash at you again. And you get a 19 for a total of 27. Ugh. At five, I've rolled one, five points of damage, and then it does 14 points of necrotic damage. And that's its turn. I need everyone to make a wisdom saving throw as well. Okay. Those who are immune to being frightened, don't. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. 26. Okay, you save. 24. Save. 24. Save. What was the save again? 15. Wisdom? Yeah, wisdom. Oh, okay. Alindra high fives Penelope, or low fives <laughs> Penelope, because she's very tiny. <laughs> no. And how are you rolling? Ooh, like, was I got that a 15. Plus... I, oh, I you got 15 a... with wisdom? I, yeah, 15. The. Okay. Modifier for the Luguru is plus three. Okay. Oh, Akira? Yeah. What oh, are I you passed. doing? I kind of like it. Oh, is it my turn? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask what is probably a dumb question, but just to be sure. <laughs> just to be sure. Just to be sure. Headless dude undead? Yeah, uh, good point. Uh, yes. Undead. Uh, yep. Horses undead. riding undead? Yes. Uh, all these floating heads undead? Undead. Yep. Oh awesome. My gosh. Just making sure. I would like to uh, move so that uh, I'm in front of horse dude and nearby as many of the heads as possible. I'm going to pull out this holy symbol that is a raven. Uh, and I'm also going to pull out my own book. And I'm going to hold both at the same time and go, this is a little awkward, but okay. And I'm going to cast turn undead. I'm going to use two charges of the holy symbol of ravenkind so that everybody is disadvantaged on their saving throws against being turned. Uh, they all need to make, uh, what was it? Uh, um, turn on the wisdom saving throws DC 20 with disadvantage. Uh, if they, <laughs> if, if the, uh, if any of the creatures, I'm assuming the headless rider is not this, but if any of them are um, a CR rating three or lower, they are, and they fail, they're just destroyed okay um and then if they fail they have to spend their entire action fleeing from me and so i hold up the book in one hand and the holy symbol in the other and i'm like we just got back get out of the way and and the horseman unfortunately i have foreseen this moment and gets a three run, run, means run. Uh, run away, oh, run away. Tell me what away, happens to the away. death's heads. Uh, well, if they fail, it's the same thing. And if they happen to be a CR rating of three or lower, they are yep. destroyed instead. How are they destroyed? Um, I hold up both holy symbols, which work together to <laughs> cause all of these heads to explode into fire. And then as the fire goes out, the ash forms a raven in the, the sky for just a moment and then <laughs> falls to the ground in just a, an ashy heap. Oh, and right. That was that was quite impressive there. That too. Yeah. Apparently, double your holy symbols, double your fun. Uh, <laughs> it burns a legendary resistance. And it lets out a whale, but all the heads just kind of explode into nothing, like all 20 of them. And what about the horse? Uh, oh. That's why I asked about the horse. Did the horse fail? The horse also turns into pure ash. 
So the dual hand is now on foot. D- does does he fall prone? Because right. he falls eight <laughs> feet off of the horse. I was hoping the horse would get scared when we turn and oh. run away. It'd be funny and be like this Just headless guy being the like, "Wait!" I'm going to say that the 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 headless horseman is an accomplished rider and does not. I I, I yeah I will say falling on but, on your coccyx hurts. That is yeah. not a fun. That's not a fun fall. All Eight right. Feet. Even if you're undead, that's an alley. Okay. Uh, Lindra, it's, it's, it's your oh. turn. Oh wait, sorry, no, sorry, Kara's not done. I, or Kara? No, what makes you think I am done? I'm also because that wasn't a spell, so I can cast a bonus action for a spell. I'm gonna cast spiritual weapon. I want this I wanna be across this bridge. Okay. And this thing is in the way. And I know it did a lot of harm to my friends the last time. Uh so uh out of the ash that falls onto the ground, it erupts into <laughs> fire again. And for a moment you think one of them is coming back, but instead my little spiritual weapon Phoenix arrives and is going to strike at this dude. Uh, uh, 18? You hit? Awesome. Uh, he's gonna take 10 force damage. Okay, it takes 10 force damage. Not a ton, but there you go. And now I am done. All right, Alindra? Am I 10? Do you want it destroyed, or do we want to just get across? Destroy it! Can it be destroyed? It seems to come back every time we got a bridge, but I kind of agree with that. I don't know. Let's destroy it. All right. Yeah, I feel um, like this thing's gonna be a problem anytime we need a bridge. I will. Hmm. I will cast Rowlethim's psychic lance. Um, I unleash a shimmering lance of psychic power from my forehead at this creature. Uh, it has no benefit from cover invisibility. I need a, an intelligence saving throw. Uh, intelligence 18 save. How smart is something without a brain? That's my thing. It's a good question. It's a good question. <laughs> okay, and what are the effects? Uh, it is going to take 10d6 psychic damage and be incapacitated until the start of my next turn. Okay, go ahead and roll. Damage. It failed. Uh, it's going to burn a legendary resistance. 36 points of damage. Okay, so what does that have? Uh, 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 18. Okay. Okay, it, take, it takes 18 points of damage. Uh, and it is it incapacitated or not? No, it burned a legendary resistance. Okay. Um, as a bonus action, I will have Griff start to swoop. Oh, that's not even bonus action. But I will have Griff start to swoop in to help distract so that uh, Whittle can have advantage on her attacks. Um, and. Funny thing about that. Uh, as Lugaru, she already has advantage. <laughs> I have a blood frenzy. Well, then I will save it for Penelope. Thank you. Yeah. Also, thank you, uh, Todd, for reminding me. Then right. I suppose I am done. Okay. Yeah, so there's this ash falling around. There's a giant ash hammer that has been created by Orca, 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 Orca Eldrex, and recovering from the horror of seeing a tidal wave of just severed heads rolling around a bridge and then turning into dust. Uh, we have Whittle now. Whittle, what are you doing? Um, as an act of intimidation, I'm going to go back into full Luguru form. Okay. Um, which, you know, doesn't change my stats or anything. She just gets full size um, and lunges at the, the, the headless horseman. Okay. Um, and attempts to bite uh, for one of her actions. And that is a plus nine to hit. Uh, be- because I'm not going to give you legendary actions, I'm going to allow you another claw attack as well. Thank you. Okay, what was it, Ted? Um, 25. 25 hits? And damage would be 2d8 plus 4. So that would be a 16. Okay. And with the then, bite? 
with the bite is 16. Okay, yeah. And you remember you have advantage on all these. Uh, it's, it's kind of gross and kind of gamey, this undead flesh, but it's not not tasty to you. <laughs> as you dig your teeth. Where do you bite it, by the way? Uh, right into the meaty part of the shoulder between the neck. Um, okay. So you just open blade. up the stump even bigger, basically. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, uh, make your claw attacks. And mid-bite, Little is just really excited that she now enjoys the taste of flesh uh, and not just blood. So I will attempt to now claw this creature, which is okay. another plus nine to hit. Go ahead. Does a 19 hit? Uh, it's, remember, with, with advantage. Uh, does a 19 hit? Yes, it does. But okay. go and roll your advantage just in case you ever crit. Okay. Crit fish! Yeah. All the crit fishing! Crit fish with the crits. Oh, so close. Oh. <laughs> oh <wow. laughs> All right, go, go and roll your 19. damage. <laughs> um, so that would be a 2d6 plus 4. Uh, 11 for okay. claw. Uh, does and any it, of this it, do necrotic damage as well? No, um... But did the bite? Yes, okay. actually. Can you go and roll the necrotic damage for me? Yeah, good catch. So that's 46. Okay. Sorry, I'm still, um, getting you're, my You're new to being here. a giant Lugaru. Yeah, you're, you're allowed. So that's 13 necrotic damage. Okay. And go and make your final slashing attack. Uh, well, for the claws, that was 11. Okay. Total? Yep. And with advantage? Remember, you get two claw attacks. Well, I get one bite and one claw. Are you saying I get two claws? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I said, okay. Because because you're, you're I have removed 11 legendary actions. Uh, hey, I'll from take your... it. I'll take yeah. it. So I get another 2d6 plus 4. Okay. Uh, so that is a 13. Yeah, ro roll with advantage. Oh, sorry for damage, and then I didn't roll to hit. Yeah. Um, so many dice. So many wolf things. Oh, it's wolf a good things. thing I get an advantage because that one's not good. That was terrible. Let's try that again. We really need to make dice available, like rolls available to everyone at home. Agreed. Uh, all right, that's... Uh, so that's... Yep, you hit. Is that 26? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can go ahead and roll your, your damage. Uh, I think I already did that, and I forgot what it was. Uh, go ahead and roll again. Okay. Because dice rolling is fun. Yes. <laughs> nine. Five, five, oh, nine total? Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. You slash, you bite a chunk out of its shoulder between its neck and its shoulder, and you tear off one of its arms. Excellent. And it is clearly hurting at this moment. And you just have a big hunk of undead flesh in your mouth. I'm going to eat it like a turkey leg. What is strange is when you <laughs> bit it, it seemed to burn away. And or Kara, you noticed this in a very specific way. That it was necrotic damage, but there was some kind of celestial energy at the same time burning into the wound. That almost kind of like sealed the wound at, as it did so. Hmm. All right. And now we are not with that, not with that, not with that, not with that. And we are back to Penelope Half Pint. What are you doing? Let's shed some light on this situation. <laughs> oh, no. Penelope cast Moonbeam. Okay. At fifth level. <laughs> uh, what so does Moonbeam do? A silvery beam of pale light shines down on a five-foot radius, 40-foot high cylinder centered on a point that I choose on top of this headless horseman. And the, when a creature enters the spells area for the first time or starts a turn there, it's in ghost and ghostly flames and must make a constitution saving throw DC 17. Okay. Um, if it is going to try and make that, I am going to use my fate ability. Okay. Uh, so I will apply a d10 penalty to that roll. Wow. Uh, All right. It brings it down to eight. 
Uh, I, I roll five. Oh, I see, see. Okay, I gotcha. Um, so what was the difficulty, Penelope? Uh, 17. minus five so 13 oh yeah it failed okay 26 points of radiant damage damn okay and on uh are you able to yeah i'll allow you to like kind of cast it without like directly uh since you know they're not grappled in combat you're able to focus up on the doulahan and not penelope i mean not uh whittle Right, I figured she's five feet away. The entire the entire uh, uh, Dullahan erupts in flame, and you just hear a horrible wailing scream. Is that your last action? Yeah. Okay, everyone, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Fifteen. Okay. Twenty-one. Twenty-six. Seventeen. Fourteen. Mm. And I know it shows as 15, you? but that's because you're not a fire for a whittle. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, those who failed get 18. I'm looking at you, Alindra, with judgment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how did you fail? Wisdom save. Uh, 18 points of damage if you failed, and half that if you did not. That damage is psychic. What's doing the attack? What's happening? Uh, a, a horrible well like erupts from the throaty bit of the, oh, okay. so like of a the horseman at this moment. Thing. Yeah, got it. Sorry that I did not describe. No, 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 it's all good. I was just making sure it wasn't some sort of charm or something I could avoid. How is it even screaming? It doesn't have a vocal box. <laughs> there's no, no. There's nothing from there up. Can't. Say. He's screaming from his heart. But hearts also well, it's don't have... in a lot of pain. <laughs> and now my head is as well. Oh my god. This is the weirdest adventure. And I'm, <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm okay with it. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, Whittle, very fixated on the person that's right in front of them, attacks you again. Does okay. 25 hit? Yes, it does. All right, and it swings its double bladed axe for ten slashing damage. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, that was only twelve. Wow. Okay, so that misses. Uh, yes, because my armor class is sixteen. I need you. Okay. Yep. That's fine. And it is going to toss a fiery skull at you. Or carry Eldrex, which is funny and a terrible idea, but it doesn't know better. So, yeah. Does a 15 hit? No. Also, I'm too busy looking at it like, where did you pull a fiery skull from? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) It just pulls a fiery skull out and throws it past you and misses. Uh, and, Al- and Lindra and Penelope duck out of the way. I almost want to like catch it. <laughs> she's immune to fire damage, so like catch it, and be like, make a dexterity saving throw. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah, why not? Let's do this. Fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> you just grab the fiery skull, and it doesn't burn your hand. Where did you even pull this from? <laughs> you don't All want right. to know. And I'll toss it into the water. All right, we're on Orkira. What are you doing? Uh, first, my spiritual weapon is going to attack. Okay. So... Well, that's a natural one. I'm too busy looking at this skull that he threw at me. <laughs> chaos! Uh, chaos die. Yeah, chaos die. All right, so my spiritual weapon misses. I throw the skull into the water. I'm like, oh, um... All right, fine then. Um, and then I'm going to cast Burning Hands at this creature. It needs to make a dexterity saving throw DC 20. Uh, It'll take half damage even if it succeeds. And then something else is going to happen. No. Did it? It failed. Okay. It's going to take nine fire damage. And then uh, a little bit of that fire comes flying off and lands on Whittle's head. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, is 1d4. Whittle, you are going to get five hit points back as I'll use Warmth of the Flame because I cast a leveled spell. A little bit of fire just kind of goes bonk and it feels a little warm. And it, it, oh. it's that warmth when like you've had some nice hot tea and you feel it oh. kind of right here and you get five health back. Oh, that's kind of nice. Uh, and Thank that's you. everything. Okay. Uh, we are now on the Lindra. What are you doing? <sighs> um, I would like to... How's it looking? Rough. It's on fire. It's in a moonbeam. Yeah. <laughs> it's missing an arm. Uh, it's got a big, big stump now that has been bent out, and you can actually see the pattern of Whittle's teeth uh, hmm. where the flesh was. All right, also, despite think... the fact that it's headless, it threw a flaming skull at me instead of holding on to its head. <laughs> instead of giving itself a new head, yeah. Um, right? Interesting. Um, I very will, judgy yeah. on the doula hand. <laughs> saying, We've been spending a lot head. of time with Griff, so <laughs> it's yes. true. Yeah. Um, I will use uh Ralithim psychic glance again. Okay. Go ahead. An intelligence eighteen save. Okay, and use six. It fails. All right, uh, and that does 25 points of damage. Okay. And how does this thing die? Yes! Yeah, oh. nice. Mm -hmm. It's coming towards us, having just thrown uh, the flaming skull. What it wasn't counting on was the way that Okira can manipulate flame and a thin streak of flame comes back at it uh, and catches. And this flame touched by the phoenix and the, the holy symbol of Ravenkind uh, is imbued with a different sort of power. And it creeps up the creature, winding its way, swirling until the creature is engulfed in flame, uh, becoming almost like a an illuminating beacon, uh, which Vordred hasn't seen fire in quite some time. So this is <laughs> quite a surprise, I would imagine, uh, which the light bounces off of Vordred's, you know, oiled abs, um, <laughs> glinting, uh, and it is engulfed. And for a moment, you see the, sh the shadowy shape of, of the face of the person this once was, and then it vanishes. Nothing is left but ash. The body does fall to the ground. It does not disappear into ash, however. The yep. body still is there, lifeless. And you see it's as it falls to the ground, everything happens. But you see it trying to knit itself up again. But you see the wounds aren't healing. It's inert. But it's starting it's... to pick itself up again. Push it toward... I, I, we push it toward more modern. Because if it dies there, it can't come back. Well, you're on one side is Barovia and one side is... I'm sorry, we're going to Barovia. Side. Never mind. Um, yeah. Maybe we should just get out of here. Will, it is your turn. What are you doing? Wait. I'm going to try to take the other arm off. Because I, do I do I see it kind of regenerating? It, it's on, it's not to? quite regeneration. It just keeps on getting up no matter what. And so Probably it's... a flesh wound. Yeah. It's a type of regeneration, but these things just keep on popping back up like a bad penny. Or how are you attacking it? I'm gonna jump right on top of it, and as I'm standing on top of it, I'm gonna look back at my group like, what, what do you all think? Should, should I keep attacking it? I mean, should we just get I out mean, of here? I've got a moonbeam on it, so I wouldn't suggest doing the attack. <laughs> oh, um, okay. We've encountered this thing before, and it seemed to just come back. I. It might be a feature of the landscape and not an actual creature. I don't know if we can fully defeat it. But I mean, it, it, if you're and I have a way taking off limbs. Want to go, but. I wonder what would happen if we banished it. Where would it go? It's probably from here, so. That's why probably... I didn't banish it, yeah. 
I mean, I guess. Oh, um, you, know, you know, I could do. Um, we could. One of us cleric folk could use. Um, uh, um, come on, brain. To preserve a dead person, gentle repose. Oh. I mean, if it's un. It's undead, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It, Maybe yeah. just go? Well, I'm I gonna disengage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Should we just go? Yeah, I agree I with Penelope and Whittle. We should probably just go at this point. I don't think we can, like, fully destroy this thing. It seems to just be tied to the bridge. Yeah. Maybe the next time we have to cross a bridge, it'll remember us, and instead of trying to fight us, it will actually just let us through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you see you see the flesh starting to kind of come back to life, though it's uh, severed limbs are now, like, the one severed, well, you've cut off two arms, are, like, trying to inch their way over to them at this moment. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. Well, I'm gonna allow you a perception check. Actually, um, hmm, who's the creepiest person? I guess that is well. <laughs> I mean, I'm half Dompier, half Lagru. Yeah, I mean, if there was guess a stat it... for creepy, Whittle would win. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. That's, that's guess accurate. it depends on your definition of creepy. Yeah, Not if... all I care about is your definition of creepy, Whittle. Uh, I mean, the bar is pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, my passive perception is 23 as a Luguru. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you just notice that it's knitting up in the way that it's doing it. Um, it, it, there is like a, a deep magical connection. This thing's never going to die from what you've seen. And being a dampier and experiencing vampires a great deal, you've kind of seen this kind of magic before. Unless the body's completely and totally eliminated in some particular way, either with like acid or something, it's just going to keep rising back up. So even though like I'm still gnawing on the arm that I chewed off its body, is it? does it look like that arm is growing back? Uh... N the arm is attempting to grow back as you're doing so, but your stomach feels fine. You're digesting it. Oh, that's good. I'm just, I yeah, I'm going to continue to disengage, but I'm also going to just take this arm with me because it's okay. delicious, but also in the off chance that it cannot regenerate because it does not have this arm, that would be ideal. All right, you're, you're causing a collection. All right, is everyone running across the bridge? Yeah. Is that the plan? Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, you pass by just some of these heads are almost like kind of ash and petrified and you kind of crush them as you walk by uh, just there's just muddy ash all over this bridge that is part ice and part wood at the same time the Dullahan is trying to scrape its way up now missing one of its arms with Whittle running past it with it in its teeth and you all pass into the mists at this moment and you see before you on on a cliff edge, Barovia, and you see Castle Raven Ravenloft in the distance. Wow! Never thought I'd be glad to be back here. Yep. Nope. Me too. I don't know if I'm glad to be back here, but I'm glad to be here versus the other places. Um, anyone see? I turn to Vordred. Well, good job. See you all later. Thank you. Good bargain. Hey. But what are you what? going to do now? Oh, I don't know. Trouble? Trouble or, or travel? Uh, uh I meant, uh, I'm going to do good things and make friends. Hey, Vordred, can I make what? a suggestion? Mm, oh, fine. Why don't you not cause trouble because then we'll have to come and find you and destroy you like we did the thing on the bridge. And if you do cause trouble, make sure it's with a certain vampire lord. Yeah, I'm not going to touch that one. No. Uh, I appreciate your help and your appreciation of my body. I will now leave. Goodbye. Goodbye. Fog cloud. Little, you just see him, before... like, skulking. 
<laughs> before he Walter, goes, you've had two hundred years listen, to practice. Little is like, call me. <laughs> I'll call you. Yeah, don't tell them about the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say anything. And he disappears in a flourish. As you see him just running down the hill awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> That's Vordred. Oh, Vordred. That's so Vordred. All right. Do, do we? right. I'll take a quick look around. Do we see a Briv or a Freely? You do not see a Briv or a Freely, but you do sense their presence in, uh, in, in the psychic connection, <laughs> though you are not able to communicate directly with them just yet. Okay. Yeah, oh, you you kind of feel their emotions, like oh, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know guys, oh, why did we do this thing? <laughs> like you just kind they, of get free energy. They're, yeah, they're running into something. I yeah, can't quite tell what it is, but there's something, and they are running in to attack it. Briv is mo mo moving slowly in his head, and Freely is super hyperactive in his mind. And every time you connect with Freely's mind, it is a little bit like drinking like a lot of monster energy drink. Uh, so it's a little intense. What uh, what do, does everyone do uh, before we close up the session in Barovia? Now that we are back, are Finish we eating my arm? <laughs> it's disgusting. The arm is still twitching as you're eating it, so it just keeps on going further and further down Little's throat, and the hand is just like waves oh, at all of you just goodbye. Way to unsettling, which <laughs> like a an illithid. Please don't. Please just dance. slurps it up like a spaghetti noodle as it goes uh, by. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to snort. I mean... I'm disgusted by myself, so... <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean, I'm just really excited that I can eat other things besides, you know, blood. Meanwhile, Listen, the, can... the severed hand of straw, which is on your shoulder, is... Look, if hands could look terrified... <laughs> is very upset with you <laughs> having just eaten another undead hand i don't know just, how it got out of the bag of holding but eat it's the hand. it's super judgy it does what it does it does what hands do <laughs> maybe watch out <laughs> it gives an ancestral yeah. halfling gesture <laughs> this is this is hand. perfect apparently whittle can just devour undead flesh so whittle you it's can just true. eat strahd i'm the undead eater yeah we just gotta get into the castle we'll find we gotta find Briv and Freely, and then we gotta find Rend, and then you can eat Strahd, and we'll leave. Well, I, I've got quite an appetite, so looking okay. forward to it. As long as all you're eating is undead, I, I think that's awesome. This is an upgrade. And Penelope, what's the final thing you would like to say? The end. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching Her Heroes of the Plains and joining us on a much weirder adventure than I had anticipated. But uh, why I didn't anticipate that, that is my own fault. Uh, How long have you known us for? Come on. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It was very fun bringing an old character back in the form of Vordred and paying off Penelope's uh, trickery from a long time ago. About a year ago, actually. Uh, yeah. Almost to the day, <laughs> maybe. Oh. Uh, let's go around the room. Uh, Megan Kenrick, who are you? What do you do? Uh, I'm, I'm a Luguru. Um, <laughs> I'm also a human outside of D&D &D, um, who streams on Twitch and I post D&D &D related things on Twitter and I talk about D&D &D related things with Todd on his YouTube channel at Todd Kenrick. We've got some Dwarven Forge stuff coming up, um, so be sure to check that out. Awesome. And uh, Jen Kretschmer? Hello, I am Jen Kretschmer. Uh, I am a writer, producer, actor, um, all the things. Um, I'm one of the authors on Kindle Keep Mysteries. I'm the creator of the Accessibility in Gaming Resource Guide. And now we just launched the Disabled Professionals in Tabletop. Um, if you would like to be added to that, um, you can find the link in my Twitter uh, bio um, on the pinned tweet. Um, please sign up. We have over 150 people now, which is just incredible uh, across more than 30 professions. Um, uh, you can catch me streaming on my own channel, Dreamwisp Jen. You can catch me uh, tomorrow night on Vampire the Nightlife, um, playing a very, very different character um, on uh, Play Renegade. Um, and this weekend, I will be painting WizKids minis with uh, with V and with um, with the Crafting Muse V and with with Gabe. Um, Gabe Hicks. It's going to be a blast. So come hang out on Sunday with us.
Awesome. Uh, Lauren Urban. Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I am the content, I'm a content creator for Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. And if I stumbled over that, it's because I'm still figuring out what my title is. But hey, it's fun. You, I do you got content this. stuff. <laughs> I, I, I do lots of, of content. Content things. master. Yeah. If Ooh. you want to see some of the things I do, you can come tomorrow to uh, the Sketching Hour, which is a stream I do with two other artists and where we roll dice and come up with a random creature that they draw. And I work with the chat and we come up with the backstory for this creature and it usually involves human teeth. So there you go. Also, you can see me playing a version of this character on uh, from about a year ago on D4 on Sundays on the Rock Punch ATL channel uh, at four o'clock Pacific on Sundays, which I've said twice now, uh, but you really should because those are really, really good people and uh, I like playing with them a lot. And otherwise you can find me on Twitter as Oboe Lauren doing Oboe things. Awesome. And I, I did it. I knew it was going to Hope, Hope Lavelle. Yeah, I knew it was going to do it. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. You can also listen to me play more D and D uh, on Attackers of Opportunity, which is a podcast you can find anywhere you can find podcasts. Awesome. And I am Todd Kenrick. I am married to the wonderful Mrs. Megan Kenrick. We 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 have a YouTube channel together where we talk about D and D things. I am the content manager over at CND Games as well, and I do uh, consulting and tabletop and video games on top of all of that and a bunch of secret stuff as per usual. Uh, thank you so much for watching everyone at home. Uh, we appreciate you going on this journey with us next week. We've got uh, freely is back in as well as Briv with Adam Bradford and uh, B Dave Walters, and we will see you then. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.